people in our society think about aging, they immediately use terms like tsunami, or I think we should change our language and think about terms like triumph. The fact of the matter is that if you were born in 1900, your life expectancy was 51 years of age. Today, it's 81 years of age. And if you're lucky enough to make it to 65, you have 20 years of life expectancy ahead of you, and 17 of those years will be in good health. That's a success, and that's a triumph, and we should celebrate that. Our current system wasn't designed to care for the people it's seeing today. And today, the average Canadian is close to 50. And the majority of the users of our healthcare system are frail, older adults. So we have to remember that the patients have changed and the system has. Uh, what happens as people age, what happens as they have multiple illnesses accumulating, and how can we best provide care for them as a person with multiple diseases and have ideal care provided for all of their conditions rather than just looking at each disease in isolation. It makes you realize that a lot of what we're doing in hospital we could be doing at home and doing it at a much lower cost to the system. Is there a better way of providing care to those people uh, rather than having them end up in the emergency department. So the Green Shield Canada Foundation was started by Green Shield Canada in 1992 and the reason it was created was to be a catalyst for change in the Canadian healthcare system. The Health Innovation Collaborative was put together by Green Shield Canada Foundation as a collection of three hospitals and two community organizations, so non-traditional partners, who came together to work around the issue of helping seniors age in place in the comfort of their own homes. The Green Shield Canada Health Innovation Collaborative partners are St. Mike's Hospital, University Health Network, Bridgepoint Health, Alzheimer's Society of Toronto, and Sprint Senior Care. The goals of the collaborative are around partnership, networking, and sharing resources and information. Hospital care is just one part of their care. It's also important that they're supported in the community, that they're supported in their doctor's visits, and that they're supported whenever they engage the healthcare system. And what's really unique about the Green Shields model is that it's bringing together partners across the entire spectrum. In terms of collaboration, one of the things that I've learned is the whole notion of reciprocity and uh, looking at how to increase that tie between organizations. If it's one-sided, it's never going to work, but if it's reciprocal and it's back and forth and we have the opportunity to provide input but also get output as a result of it, it's all the richer. The nature of this funding relationship is unique. That having the foresight to bring organizations together and say we're going to fund you but we expect you to work together for a collective good is a strength of the funding relationship and it's one that I think as a model should be rolled out into other sectors or other funding agencies because this truly we have got more by doing this than we would have if we worked alone. They kept us all focused on the big vision and to perceive each of the obstacles that we were facing along the way as glitches that instead of acting as deterrents became the sources that we hope would be of great value, not only for other organizations in Canada, but around the world. It's catalytic, it's transformational, it brings a voice to issues that don't have a voice, and it brings some power behind it to help elevate those issues to a place where they're heard. That's the power of what the foundation can do.